Woo-hoo. All the answers are gonna be either MacGyver or Mr. T. My boobies really are not that big. That sounds dirty. Woo-hoo. Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm keeping score because I don't trust Jason. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this show? <laughs> wow! It's an ATW9K sausage fest. So much testosterone. We should dedicate this show to guy stuff, guys, like uh, like explosions and hot rods and assault rifles. And a little bit too much of Transformers, thank you very much. <laughs> and the nudie bar. Yes. I'm your host, Jason Hawk, shredding my axe here in Ohio. Let's introduce our contestants. On uh, on bass, from Costa Rica, he's Omar Hernandez. Oh, dude, no one likes the bassist. No, the bassist is cool. You keep the rhythm going, man. You're both rhythm and melody. Eh. Yes, you're very important. <laughs> Uh, nobody likes the keyboardist, though. And pounding the synth keys tonight, he's he's our Canadian, Kevin Archibald. Uh, good day to everyone. And, uh, yes, my keyboards are pumping through the, my Marshall speakers. And uh, God rest Mr. Marshall, who died today. What? Really? Yeah, the guy, J- uh, James Marshall from, was it James Marshall? Something Marshall. M- Marshall was, Amps? James yeah, Marshall? as in Marshall Amps. He's, uh, he passed today. Wow. So raise a glass, boys. Chin, chin. Cheers. Wow. Uh, we're, we're probably going to have to play some sort of a... A metal bumper for him, then. Okay. And on the drums, from the Rocky Mountain Peaks of Colorado, and the Moral of the Story podcast, he's Nate Hazayak. Hey, everybody. Hello. I'm not going to lie, Nate's here because he bribed me. <laughs> Seriously, no, no, yesterday I, I got a mysterious email that just popped up in my inbox, and all of a sudden it said, hey, guess what you own now? Uh, you, you own some Renegade Ops on the Steam. <laughs> but, Ooh. To be completely yeah. honest, it cost me about half a cent. <laughs> because I was buying a copy of Renegade Ops for me and my little brother, and it was one cent more to buy four copies of Renegade Ops. So. Anything to get him off the Castleville, man, is a good step. So we yes. welcome you. <laughs> hey, man, some days at Castleville is all I get to play. That's the, uh, that's the price of having a kid, who at the time of this recording is exactly six months old today. Oh, chin chin. Yeah. Uh, but tonight, let's talk about trivia. We're doing a regular show while Roe is on assignment at PAX in Boston. It's the Penny Arcade Expo. She's playing some video games tonight, guys. Yes, if you see her... Uh, well, it would have been a week ago. So if you saw her, never mind. Go on. <laughs> I was there. Just scream uh, boobies at her. Yes. That. Oh, that's what. That should be a thing. That should be like um, automatic ten points for our listeners if you scream boobies at Row in public. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, if you really do. want, I can pretend to be Row. I just got to get myself in a mindset. Um, well, I really love sparkly vampires and codependent relationships with underage women. Okay, I'd there like we to go. Hear your Filipino accent. <laughs> Is that what she has? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> she likes to pretend. But uh, in the meantime, listeners, I need you to send me some trivia questions. Go ahead and send them off to ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com because when Ro comes back, we'll be doing an entire Are You Smarter Than an Eighth Grader episode. Uh, that means I need questions about science, literature, social studies, math, art, music, all that kind of stuff that you should have known by the end of high school or by the time you went into high school. We'll put those, uh, you know, those weird contestants to the, the test and see if they're smarter than actual eighth graders. That's going to be gringo eighth graders, right? Gringo eighth graders. <laughs> so, so any social studies question, I'm going to probably fail, right? Right. It, it would be like the equivalent of a college graduate in Omar's Nation. Oopsie. You wish. Oh. You wish. Hey, you just called me a gringo, so I thought I could fight back. <laughs> but anyway, we need to head on into the trivia. Let's do a face-off. Tonight, you'll be playing for first pick of the following categories you've got at your disposal. Movie pop music, guest star guitar, and hip-hop or Shakespeare. Three awesome categories that I really, really liked. And then to wrap it up at the end of the show, uh, we'll do another one. We'll do maybe like some potpourri or something. Okay. Cool. But for right now, our face-off question is I need to see which of the three of you can name five, at least five, of the 12 countries that have or have had confirmed nuclear weapon stockpiles of their own. I know three. So I'm just going to open it up. Let's see who can do it first. We're the only ones that have used it in anger. So don't piss us off. U.S., obviously. Okay. This. Oh, but, okay. this is this Con- confirmed, right? Confirmed, confirmed. yes. So it's it, a very Israel important count. word to remember. <laughs> yes, you avoided the obvious pitfall. But North okay. Korea does count, right? It sure does. Good job. Great. Great Britain. Russia should count as well? Great Britain does not have its own. Oh, yes, it does. Sorry. The French I was thinking, did. I don't know what they have now. No, the Great Britain does. I made a mistake. I was thinking that those were some of the NATO nukes. But no, UK does, so that's up to three. I'm pretty sure South Africa has them. No, South Africa so, used to have them. They say China. have or used to have. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I did, didn't I? I need to reword this a little bit better. 
<laughs> or China. There's another one. Uh, India. Yeah. Yes, India. Oh, yeah, India and probably Pakistan. France. I heard Pakistan, France, both on the list. I think the Ukraine has them, but I'm not sure. Or they used to. Ukraine used to. Well, the Soviet Union used to have Yes. Like, All right, you guys are doing awesome. Now, there's a couple of other ones that have given them up. Belarus and Kazakhstan. So we're not going to sit here picking and, and grinning all day until you hit both of those. But uh, Kazakh had them? Really? Wow. Yeah. I think Terrifying there was only them. one South uh, uh, South American uh, nation that had them at one point. I don't know if they still do. Uh, I don't see any South American ones on the list at all. Which which one would you have picked? I don't remember. Brazil or Venezuela, probably. Because uh, this is according to Wikipedia, which, you know, can be faulty. But I doubt Very I nearly doubt Cuba. <laughs> I could have but sworn was there was one a tiny nation in, in, in South... Uh, I think they bought them from the Russians at one point, but maybe I'm just huh. off. Uh, now you're thinking of the new X-Men film. <laughs> <laughs> could be either way, but you guys did a really, really great job. Um, that, by the way, was suggested to me by Jeff Ferry, who sent us some cool stuff before, and, and he's in the military. So yes, very he always sends us good questions. Uh, definitely. Uh, I think I heard the most answers, though, come from Nate. And what? then... <laughs> I got the most right. That's and up. then Omar, and then Kevin. Doesn't Fair matter. enough. So Nate, you go ahead and you get your first pick of those three categories for the hot seat. We got movie pop music, guest star guitar, or hip hop or Shakespeare. I think I'll probably end up embarrassing myself, but I think I'm gonna go with movie pop music. Excellent. And Omar, I'll take Shakespeare or hip hop. Oh, <laughs> good, 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 good. And Kevin, that means, sir, that you are saddled. With guest star guitar, which I think you'll actually do fairly well at anyway. All right. I'll, I'll do the guitar one uh, in honor of Mr. Marshall himself. <laughs> so I would actually like to go ahead and start here with Kevin. Okay. Because I- I'm curious to know exactly how many of these you can get. And really? uh, I'm looking over these songs. This is some of, some really good songs. Uh, not not too bad. Some of my favorites, as a matter of fact. This was sent in by, uh, by a guy named Morgan. I don't know his last name. He didn't let me know. So we're going to call him Morgan B. McGill- McGillicuddy. Okay. Sounds about right. <laughs> Are you ready for question number one? Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, what do I got to do this week? I, I have to unlearn what I have learned. Okay, you okay. paddle one. Let's go. I have, I have unlearned what I've learned. Go for it. Let's hear uh, it. Don't, don't forget your defeat in the cave. Oh, man. The cave, that sucked. Okay, go on. <laughs> what Dutch-born guitarist and rock and roll hall of famer provided licks on Michael Jackson's Beat It? If you listen, uh, Dutch born is definitely definitely a clue. Yeah. If you think about the name. Of uh, of uh, okay, uh, I'm thinking uh, Eddie Van Halen. Yes, there you are. Nice. One for one. You pulled that one out very very nicely. Ah uh, yes, kind of pieced it all together. <laughs> Bless. I love those ones. You can kind of reason out when you don't really know. <laughs> Number two is probably the hardest one of the bunch. So here we go. This royal Slayer guitarist played on the Beastie Boys No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Royal. I have royal in quotation marks, just like a Jeopardy clue. To give yeah. A little bit of a nudge. I actually, bless. Know this one. Uh, do you, Omar? I'll trade you categories, man. <laughs> Shakespeare's my boy. Slayer, dude. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm not. I was never into that kind of music, really. Uh, yeah, Omar, if you can do it, man, you take it. Kerry King. Kerry King is the right answer. Nice. Yeah, now, never would have got that in a million years. No, Omar, just this one time, this one time only, I'm going to let you choose. Do you keep the point or do you give it to Kevin? I give it to Kevin. <laughs> All right, oh, good, good Bless man. your heart. Number three, Kevin. Alanis Morissette's You Ought to Know is supposedly about her, her breakup with Full House star Dave Coulier. But what other Dave of Jane's Addiction provided guitar? Oh, uh, Navarro? Yes, Dave Navarro, good yes. job. You know, I think I only know this from you making Dave Navarro jokes about Game of Thrones guy. Yeah, he's totally <laughs> called Drogo. <Kaltrogo. laughs> oh, yeah. Watch, they look exactly alike. <laughs> well, uh, Cal Drogo's a little beefier. Just yeah. a bit. And I, he, I he has no nipple rings. I think you could take him. Yes, sir. What yeah, is it? Did, did you see the Game of Thrones premiere? Oh, my giddy aunt. Did I see the Game of Thrones premiere? Clutch my pearls. It was off the hook. We'll totally talk about it afterward. Okay. For now, we're up to number four. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues with David Bowie's Let's Dance, featuring guitar by what American blues rock legend? Wow. I'm glad I did not pick this category. I know. I this know is like, for, 
this is for proper like music geeks. I used to sit beside someone who in my office. He knew every session artist on every like song. He's like, "Oh, well, you think that's the Beatles, but here's who else is in that song." <laughs> but uh... let, let me make this one step easier for you. Featuring guitar by what American blues rock legend known for pride and joy? Oh, uh, okay. Eric Clapton? No, is he white? But he is oh, white. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh a Stevie Ray Vaughan? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yes, it is Stevie Ray Vaughan. Is he oh, white? There you yes, go. he's white. He's totally white. I'm yeah. colorblind, man. I mean, he was white before the plane crash. He's probably darker now. No. <laughs> oh, cut. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I like Stevie Ray Vaughan, man. That is, is one up. His, his little wing is just awesome. Number five. Moving away from <laughs> that as quickly as possible and never looking back. <laughs> this slow hand played lead guitar on the George Harrison 1968 classic While My Guitar Gently Weeps, based on the I Ching. Ba- based on the... Okay, that one threw me, but I know you're talking about Eric Clapton, but... Uh, it is. I, I, the I Ching? Yeah, that's what that song's based on. Is that like an iPad okay. thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's an iPad from the 60s. You know that, that George Harrison and the other guys were into all that Eastern mysticism stuff. Oh, right? that's right, yeah, yeah. The- Robbie Shanker stuff or whatever. Indeed. But nice job. Not too bad. Let's see. Let's count them up. You got uh, Van Halen. Uh, Omar gave you Kerry King. Oh, that was generous. <laughs> Dave Navarro, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton. With, with Omar's help, you have a perfect run. Nice. Five Woo-hoo! for five. Thank you, Omar. No problem. Kevin. Omar, man. I'm going to give you another chance. You want to take that point back? No. <laughs> no? If it were Roe, okay. I would have right. taken it, but, but no. Oh, Not no. To <laughs> Let's move over to Nate. All right. Nate, you've got a, a category here submitted by Brian Myers, which I can't remember. Is this the first time that we're hearing his name? I barely remember I what so. I had for breakfast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I've typed up so many different emails, including uh, you know categories that have been submitted that I can't remember. I'm sorry, but I, I think this is the first time I'm hearing Brian's name. He sends us movie pop music. So here we go to Nate, number one. Smash Mouth provides all-star, Walking on the Sun, and Why Can't We Be Friends for what 2001 film starring Whoopi Goldberg, Kathy Bates, Wayne Knight, Rowan Atkinson, and John Lovitz? Whoopi, uh, what would, uh, what, what, give me the actors one more time. Whoopi Goldberg, Kathy Bates, Wayne Knight, Rowan Atkinson, and John Lovitz. I can picture A movie it. that I figured would be right up your, your alley. This this would be a moral of the story podcast movie faux fo- fo- show. Uh, for some reason, I can like picture it in my head. Oh, um, it's a, a remake of "It's a Mad, 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 Mad World." Yeah, and it's got John Cleese and um, Rat Race. There you are. There it is. Nice, <laughs> nice. got very that. nicely done. Uh, number two, th- you're going to see the pattern emerge here because these are all pretty much the exact same. I'm going to give you the songs, who did the songs, and what movie. So number two, Madonna provides Like a Virgin, Material Girl, and Vogue for what 1985 film in which Rosanna Arquette gets amnesia? I don't think I know that one. It's probably the hardest one. No, nah, second hardest one. I, nah, I'm spacing it. If anyone else knows, take it, go ahead and take a stab. Nope. No. I don't even know who Rosanna Arquette is. She's ugly. You wouldn't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you would like her, Omar. She's in a few other things that are fun, at least. Yeah. Um, she's in Pulp Fiction. Yes. That's why. She's she's related to uh, to David Arquette. She was the the wife of the drug dealer. Huh. Yeah, Honey Bunny. I, I'm a pass on that one. I don't, I don't have any idea. This one is desperately seeking Susan. Oh, oh I, you know, I, I should, probably should have had that one. But wasn't Madonna in that? Madonna as well? was in that. So indeed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I should have gone ahead and told you that um, after she gets amnesia, she's mistaken for a drifter named Susan. Huh. I thought that that might uh, might handicap it too too much. Eh, I'll take a miss. Number three, I like this movie. People say I shouldn't like this movie, but uh, Kid Rock provides picture. Is that you? And all summer long for this 2001 comedy starring a down on his luck David Spade, along with Christopher Walken and Dennis Miller. That's uh, Joe Dirt. Show enough is. I, I like huh. that movie as well. It's a terrible. It's not something movie. I'll watch every day, but uh, on occasion, it's it's fun. I think he's very, very funny, but also very likable in that movie. Uh, number four, John Bon Jovi provides Bad Medicine, Dead or Alive, and You Give Love a Bad Name for what 2000 Feel Good Stinker, starring Jay Moore, Kevin Spacey, Helen Hunt, and Haley Joel Osment. Uh, pay it forward. There you are. And number five, probably the hardest one. Like I said, uh, the, the Desperately Seeking Susan question was pretty tough, but this is going to be the hard one. 
John Denver provides Rocky Mountain High, Annie's Song, and Country Roads for what 1977 flick in which a hapless grocer is the only person who can see George Burns. Oh, ah. um, it's, it's, it's Isn't it just, oh, God, dear God? Uh, yeah, yes. there you go. Nice. I've, seen yeah. a, I've seen that, and it's got like three sequels or something, too. Oh, I didn't know that. That's... Yeah, like a that really good cartoon. My mom loved one of those, uh, one of them in particular. I think it was the first. The original, one. probably. Yeah. All right. Well, that being said, we're going to take an ad break. Then we're going to come back and we're going to test. Oh my yes. Hi, everybody. Rich here. You know, one of the best things about Simply Syndicated is the great community of listeners we've got and all of the things you guys do to help us out. Something you could do that helps us spread the word about our shows is to let people know that you're listening on Facebook and Twitter. All our episodes have sharing buttons on them so you can tell your friends about us with just a few clicks of the mouse. Just visit our website at simplysyndicated.com and click the sharing buttons to help spread the word. Nerd Hurdles, where every week, Jacob and Mandy will help you navigate the labyrinth of nerddom. Don't be afraid. But you will be. No, you won't. You will be. Nerd. This is simply syndicated.com. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's Omar's turn. And Omar, you get Hip Hop or Shakespeare. Yes. Submitted to us by Shane Thomas. I think you're, you're really, really going to like this category. I'm going to give you a lyric. You tell me whether it's from a rap song or from any of the collected works of Willie... Willie the Shakespeare. Okay. Here we go. Number one, to destroy the beauty from which one came. Okay. Let me preface this by saying I haven't read a single Shakespeare, like, no works of Shakespeare. <laughs> Omar's going to play the guest all night. And I really don't like hip-hop. So, <laughs> I want to say hip-hop. It okay. is hip-hop. It's Jay-Z. It's uh, Can I Live. It's very good. Number deuce. Maybe it's hatred I spew. Maybe it's food for the spirit. I will say Shakespeare. That is hip hop. That's uh, that's Eminem's Renegade, uh, also featuring Jay Z. Hmm. Number three, you're one for one okay. on this. Uh, men would rather use their broken weapons than their bare hands. Shakespeare. There you are from okay. Othello. Four. I was not born under a rhyming planet. Okay, since it says rhyming, I'm going to say it's a trick question to make. So it's Shakespeare. Yes. Nice yes. pick. That was uh, Benedict from uh, uh, Much Ado About Nothing. Shut Another it, for Kevin. you and your books. <laughs> Don't come with all that reading and shit. Uh, I just saw the film, the Kenneth Branagh film. Remember it. Senko. Socrates, philosophies and hypotheses can't define. Mm, hip hop. It is. From a song that I've never ever heard, but apparently Shane likes it. Because it's uh, Triumph by Inspector Deck. <laughs> 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 a member of the Wu-Tang Clan, if I am not mistaken. I certainly wouldn't be able to confirm or deny. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Uh, I think that's that it. That was quick. Uh, I'm just counting them up. I, I think Kevin is definitely the winner. Woohoo! Or Kaven, as I accidentally wrote here next to guest star guitar. Good job, Kaven. <laughs> oh, cheers. Let's <laughs> see if you can defend your title in a cool-down round with some potpourri from David Lester. Y- yay! What? What? <laughs> Good old David Lester. Number one, jump in when you know it. It doesn't matter. We're not going to take turns or anything like that. I just want you to see who can get it and how quickly. What director made The Wild Bunch, Straw Dogs, Convoy, and The Killer Elite? Oh. Killer Elite, the, the recent one? The, the 2012 one? Or 2011? Uh, no, I, I think a little bit older. Can't remember. Clean as wood. The big one there, of course, is The Wild Bunch. That's a classic Western. Lots and lots yeah. of people die. I remember some dogs, of the people that, that are was... in The Wild Bunch, but I don't remember who directed it. Charles Bronson. We're definitely <laughs> talking about the 75 version of The Killer Elite. Yeah, and the original Straw Dogs, too. It is Sam Peckinpah. Yeah, ah, don't know who he is. Uh, there's a remake of Straw Dogs coming out soon. I oh, think. is it coming out soon? I, I thought it was already out. I kept seeing the preview I, I don't know. for it a long time ago. But I, I do know it's got Cyclops. Oh. And it's it's got, uh, what's his face? Uh, it's okay. Uh, Alexander Sarsgaard. Mm. The, the you know the sheriff. All right. Did you see the original? It's kind of gruesome. Gross, gruesome. Of that list, I, I mean, I'm not a huge Western fan. Of that list, I've seen the Wild Bunch. All right. Because I was told that if if I'm going to see any of them, that's you know the one. I haven't seen any Go of them. Ernest Borgnine. Yes, Ernest Borgnine, definitely. Airwolf. <laughs> Number two. What 1999 movie features the quote "Sticking feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken"? That's uh, Tyler Durden. In. That's, uh, Fight Club. Yes, definitely in my top ten. Yeah. yeah. 
Number three. In Firefly. The ship's walls are painted what color in the Red. kitchen? Uh, I believe they're yellow. Yellow is the answer. Good <laughs> are you yes, guessing, Omar? Have you seen that? Thing. It's a <laughs> that great thing. show. You should get a hold of it. I think that... You, didn't you say that you somehow magically have American Netflix? Uh, yes. Then you have access to Firefly. There, yeah. I'm just saying. Mm. Magic. <laughs> Number four. In what episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine did the next generation's John luc Picard Five. appear? The first. Emissary. Emissary, yes, the pilot of Deep nice. Space Nine. Nice. Uh, where he, he comes on and, and Hawk is all like, uh, I, You killed my wife, damn Borg. <laughs> she was at Wolf says, 359. Yeah, so he says we met before, and he's like, Oh, really? Where? And at Wolf 359. And then that shuts Picard up fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number five, I called him Hawk, too. I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> man called Hawk. Nice. Number five, in what comic book series did Batman utter the infamous phrase, I'm the goddamn Batman? Dark Knight? Uh, it was the one by Frank Miller. It was a Frank Miller. Dark Knight Returns? Um, Dark Knight. It's not going to be any of the really famous ones that you're thinking. I don't remember Dark what the Knight books were called. I have a copy of it, but it'd be cheating for me to go up and <laughs> look at it. No, it would be totally using your resources. <laughs> I would take it as This is the one where, where Plus Robin it's in the other room and I have to put down my headset. All-Star Batman and Robin mm-hmm. the Boy Wonder. A, Issue two. It's not the first one you should read, by far. <laughs> but I'm glad that David let me know that, because I've actually been wondering where that internet meme has been coming from. Uh, that, that panel that surfaces so very often. I, I on love the Batman, and Frank Miller takes him in a wild direction that I didn't or nor most of the major Batman fans particularly care for. Yeah, he makes them into a neocon. Yeah, Frank Miller took uh, took my, my guy Daredevil when he was just like a poor man Spider-Man and turned him into something awesome for a long time. Some of Frank Miller's work is good. I just That, that Batman I did not care for. And Frank no. Miller is kind of a nut job, but yeah, he, he's got the clock syndrome where he's right like twice, and that's <laughs> it. Uh, not twice a day, <laughs> just twice. Less. But that does bring the show to a close. I want to thank Nate Hazayek of the Moral of the Story podcast for being here with us tonight. You you came in at late notice because, you know, Kevin all week was like, no, man, I'm going to find a guest. I'm going to find ah, a guest. Here we go. And then you yeah. didn't find a guest, but that's okay. Okay, if you're out there and you're listening to this, and I asked you to be a guest, but you said, meh, and then couldn't, you know who you are. <laughs> we expect you on the future show. So thank you, Nate, for being our uh, our secondary row, our backup row. Oh, it was fun. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yes. And uh, thanks to, to Omar and to Kevin, but not thanks to Ro. No. Because <laughs> she skipped out on us. She thought that games are more important than friends. Ro, darling, I hope you're out there you having suck. fun somewhere. You Bless your heart. <laughs> See if you can bring me any of those promo codes for Dungeon Defenders. <laughs> I actually got a tweet from her a little earlier saying that Jeremy was getting a haircut from a guy with a great Italian accent. Which I thought at first was impressive until I started to think, hey, it's not really that great if he's Italian. <laughs> really? Like, I mean, it's kind of a given. I don't get it. All right. I think, I think, th- I think the hate is because uh, we're all jealous of you at PAX right now. Yeah, I wish I was eating lobster in the car park in Boston. Go Bruins. <laughs> but uh, thanks very much for listening, everybody. You have a great, great night. Night. Good night. Have fun.